My name is Claudia Lucanetti. I'm a professor of neurology at the Mayo Clinic, and uh, my area of research is studying MS pathology, which is an attempt to understand more aspects of the disease by studying the tissue. Um, we have a study that we have just um, will be presenting at the upcoming American Academy of Neurology, which involves looking at um, the way lesions are formed in MS at different stages of the disease. The key take-home messages from our study were that the pathology does change over the duration of the disease. So when patients in the early phases of multiple sclerosis, this would be a time when you find active lesions, which means the myelin is being stripped off. And at that particular time, it appears that there are very distinct patterns of tissue injury in the way that myelin is being stripped off, and we call those heterogeneous patterns. Whereas those predominate early when patients experience relapses, as the disease progresses, we find that it is very uncommon to find these active lesions, and we no longer find as commonly these diverse heterogeneous patterns, but rather tend to find a predominance of inactive or smoldering types of plaques. And those types of plaques seem to have a uniform pattern of tissue injury. So what our study really suggests is that the basis for relapses, or what predominate early in disease, really seems to be these distinct patterns of tissue injury in the myelin, Whereas when the disease seems to become more progressive and chronic in nature, we no longer see this heterogeneity, but rather feel that progression is on the basis, one, of these smoldering plaques, this kind of slow-burning type of myelin injury that occurs in pre-existing areas. And in fact, it may not even relate whatsoever to the plaque at that point, and may actually research suggests involving damage to other areas, such as the cortex, which is the surface of the brain, or what's referred to as a so-called uh, normal appearing white matter. So I think overall, uh, there has been controversy in the field about this concept of heterogeneity. Um, some studies have reported that they've been unable to replicate our findings, but I think what we really learned was it depends when you look in the disease. Our work was first published back in 2000 where this concept came out, and at that time, it really was skewed toward very early disease. Subsequent studies that found apparent contradictory results were based much later in the disease. And at that time, it would be very unlikely they had active plaques to study. So our overall study, in terms of trying to address this kind of apparent discordant finding in the literature, we took 143 autopsies of patients who lived their full life but then died of this disease at some point. And at that, uh, the focus was really to study over almost 2,500 lesions, characterize the type of plaques as to whether they were active, where the myelin was being stripped, inactive or remyelinated or repaired or smoldering with that ongoing activity just to a lesser degree. What we found was um, among these close to 2,500 lesions that as the disease goes on, um, you have a very low likelihood of having an active plaque <clears throat> when your disease is beyond, let's say, 20 years. In fact, a less than 13% probability that a plaque would be active, over 87% probability it's smoldering or it's inactive. This might explain why when a patient comes to the doctor and feels their disease is progressing but doesn't understand why they don't find new plaques or new lesions on MRI, it could very well be that we aren't at that point anymore having the active lesions that really we think are the substrate for relapses and new MRI activity. So overall, I think our study um, highlights the importance of studying tissue to understand the mechanisms of tissue injury and again, confirm our original data that there are distinct patterns in which white matter lesions are formed and that it is important to consider targeting these patterns individually since a critical take home message is that the pattern is similar among all the active lesions of a given patient. So in other words, therapy really needs to potentially be individualized to really address the heterogeneity very present early in the disease and I think the final point would be that although late in the disease patterns appear more uniform, if a patient still has active disease, which some patients do experience ongoing relapses late in MS, um, you can still find patterns. So I think right now what it highlights is that we actually have to consider the possibility that when patients have relapses, um, these active lesions that are the cause of those relapses may be formed differently in different subgroups. And uh, we don't have a way uh, short of a brain biopsy um, uh, to really distinguish these patterns. Nevertheless, the MS Society has been funding my work to try to identify uh, these different patterns with the use of MRI or genetic parameters. Um, 
I would say that that work is still in relatively uh, early stage. It's not yet really able to translate it to the clinic. Um, but I think the other key take home message is we recognize that we seem to have pretty good therapies actually to treat relapses, irrespective of the patterns. But as the disease progresses, progresses and the relapses become less frequent, we need to start to understand what the basis for that progression is. And seeing this predominance of smoldering, slow burning plaques and being able to study them now in the laboratory and be able to understand the key mechanisms at play might permit us to begin thinking of alternative therapies that would target, target those processes. I think it moves us toward a phase of saying there's not going to just be one way to treat the disease up front, but we're going to have to recognize how complex the pathology is, how dynamic it is, meaning it's changing over time, and how different parts of the brain are involved, not just the white matter, but even the cortex, as we talked about, or the deep white matter that doesn't even look affected. So until we appreciate those complexities, we won't really be able to know how to target them. I think my work is really trying to dissect those things out at the microscopic level and then help inform subsequent studies to be able to look at this, not with a microscope, but with advanced MRI techniques or clinical outcomes. So I don't think we're at the point yet now to say a therapy is for patient A, B, or C, but more recognizing that there isn't just one therapy that's working for everyone. Patients already know this, um, but rather we need to recognize why that might be, study it, hopefully model it in the laboratory, and then translate that into something that makes a difference in the patient's life. This large study was part of an ongoing project that the, initially the National MS Society has funded, and we've received additional funding from the National Institute of Health. Um, this has been referred to as the MS Lesion Project, which I think is really a unique uh, project in that it brings together neurologists, pathologists, basic scientists, radiologists, even geneticists, to try to understand MS by first starting with uh, close analysis of the lesions and then trying to branch that out into these other disciplines. 